Welcome to r slash am I the bad guy where OP saves his girlfriend's life and his girlfriend gets mad about it. I'm a 28 year old guy and am I the bad guy for telling my fiance who's 29 that I could not rely on her in a life or death situation? I have what I think is a very good sense of situational awareness. I'm a quick thinker and I tend to not panic in dangerous situations. My fiance, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. If I'm being nice, I would say that she doesn't have an awareness of danger. If I'm being honest, I would say that she has the survival instinct of a panda raised in captivity. She has no sense of danger around her, doesn't constantly examine her surroundings for things that could be dangerous, and when things are bad, her reaction is to panic and scream. On Friday, we went out on a friend of mine's boat, and we got into a dangerous situation. We were anticipating light rain, but we ended up with downpour high winds and high waves. While me and the other men were trying to strap things down and keep the boat from capsizing, my fiancé screamed and cried for dear life. She was in hysterics. And I get that it was a scary situation, but her, <laughs> her yelling and screaming that we're all gonna die and for God to save us and literally crying saying that it's my fault that she's on the boat since I asked her to come with me. None of the other girlfriends or wives were doing this, just her. And I'm sure the other women there were just as scared, but tried to keep it in for the sake of their men doing something about it. The downpour was really bad for about 15 minutes. So we had to listen to 15 minutes of wailing while we're doing everything we can to keep things all right. We made it back safe with little more damage than a few spilled white claws. On the car ride home, I told my fiance that we needed to talk about how she was behaving during the crisis. Not only was it incredibly embarrassing in front of my boys, but it was distracting, unhelpful, and telling. I told her that today proved to me that if I was in a life or death situation, I couldn't rely on her to be any help or do anything except make things more stressful. I said that she needed to learn how to not panic and be helpful. She got unbelievably mad. She said she thought she was going to die and had reason to freak out. I told her that all of us were scared, but none of us were as ridiculous as she was. We argued the entire ride home, and she's still pissed off at me. I think I was right to say this, especially since we plan on spending our lives together and raising a family, and I can't be the only level-headed one. Am I the bad guy? Also, OP clarifies that during the storm, the reason why none of the women helped is because they aren't boaters, but the guys are boaters, so the women didn't really know what to do during the storm, but the guys did. This has nothing to do with them being women and just the fact that the men were experienced boaters and the women weren't. I've been in two situations I can think of in my life that were kind of life or death situations. I don't know if the outcome would have actually resulted in death because it wasn't super high stakes, but it could have. One was when a guy was choking and I gave him the Heimlich maneuver. The second was I was driving on the interstate super fast, like 65 miles per hour. And I look in my rearview mirror and the guy coming at me is coming super fast. I know 100% certain that he's going to hit me. But luckily, I was able to avoid getting hit by altering my driving. And instead of him crashing into me at 65 miles per hour, it was more of like a light tap on my bumper. So again, I don't know what would have happened if I hadn't done the correct thing. I don't know if someone would have died, but I can say that in both of those situations, I had to really, really focus on what I was doing. And you know, <laughs> and you know what doesn't help with focusing? Oh my God, we're gonna die and it's all your fault. So like every true dad, I love the story of Chelsea Sullenberger when he landed the plane. And I've watched the YouTube video of him, like the recreation of what happened on the cockpit and him giving interviews about what he did. I've listened to those YouTube videos probably like 20 times altogether. And the way he tells the story, Sullenberger was like flying the plane. It was his plane. And when the crisis happened, when things really started to go downhill, he talked about how his co-pilot remained calm, collected. And even though the co-pilot wasn't actually flying the plane, he was still doing all the necessary steps that he had to do to see if he could turn the engines on, to troubleshoot, to come up with ideas, to just be a helpful force. Because literally, if Sullenberger didn't do what he had to do in that situation, they were all going to die. And the co-pilot wasn't panicking. He was being helpful. 
I don't want to be too harsh on this woman because if you're in a life or death situation, panic to some degree is logical. However, you're right, Opie. If you're in a life or death situation, you can't rely on your girlfriends. And odds are good that at some point in your life, you are going to be in some emergency situation from a car wreck or a baby getting sick or, you know, who knows what's going to happen in your future. A fire. It could be anything. So sitting your girlfriend down and being like, yo, you need to chill out and get a grip because sometime in the future, you might be in a life or death situation and there's no one to bail you out. So you have to do it yourself. And what are you going to do in that situation? Just scream and cry and then I guess just die, right? Am I the bad guy for embarrassing my sister's friend and making her feel unwelcome? My sister, cousin, and a couple friends came over last night after work. My sister brought a friend of hers that I'd only met a few times and that I'd never had an issue with. At one point I went to the bathroom and the ladies were in the living room calmly enjoying wine. When I came out, my sister's friend was in the kitchen arguing with my son. I asked her what she was doing. She said that my son went to the kitchen to get food and she told him to wait until I came out of the bathroom to ask me for permission. I stared at her for a second and then said, Who the F are you? You don't live here. He does. Who are you to tell him that he can't go into his own kitchen? She looked surprised and said that she was trying to be helpful. I repeated my question of why she thought that it was okay to tell someone they can't use their own kitchen when she's a guest in someone else's house. She dodged the question and then brought up that she's a teacher, which isn't even relevant, and sometimes kids try to get around the rules. I asked her what that has to do with anything. I then asked, who even gave you permission to go into my kitchen? She said that she followed my son in. I said... So you think my son needs permission to go into his own kitchen, but you can go wherever you like in my house without invitation? So you have more rights here than he does? She said that she didn't feel welcome anymore and was leaving. She went back to the living room, grabbed her bag, and walked out. My sister asked what happened, and I explained that she had a disagreement with my son. My cousin and some of the other ladies said they thought that it was strange that she followed him into the kitchen and had been wondering why she did that, and thought that her motive was weird as hell. My sister and a couple of other ladies said that her behavior was perfectly normal, and I was unnecessarily hostile to her. My cousin said, but why would you confront a child you don't know instead of saying something to the aunt who's right here? That's so weird. Everyone but my sister acknowledged that that part was weird and we all moved on. Later, my sister confronted me privately and said that she was upset that I chased off her friend. She said that she really likes this woman and that I was way over the top in the way that I spoke to her. I can be a little extra when it comes to defending my kids, so was I the bad guy? I'm on the cousin side. Why didn't... Okay, what? Well, if she thought your son was doing something wrong... Why not just nudge the aunt and be like, hey, can he go in the kitchen? Or even better, just wait until you come out of the bathroom and say, hey, I noticed that your son went to go to the kitchen to get some food. Is that allowed? Okay, so that would be the normal, logical response. But even then, we've got the added layer of, I don't even understand why she's so uptight about this. My, this is a guess. This is a complete shot in the dark. But my guess is that she's one of those people who grew up in a household where you always have to ask permission to get food. And she's just literally never learned that that's not normal, that that's the exception, not the rule. So she thinks that everyone has to ask for permission to get food. And I guess maybe she's just never learned that that's not normal. So she thought that she was helping. But even then, even if that is the case, why wouldn't she just notify the aunts? Yeah, this is really weird behavior, OP. I almost, what is going through this lady's head? What is she thinking? You know, normally you can kind of put yourself into someone else's shoes and think, okay, well, they're just being entitled or angry or emotional. Wh what is this woman doing? Is it that she just wants to be bossy? She likes to boss around kids. Maybe that's why she became a teacher. I dream of one day becoming a teacher so I can boss around children and tell them what to do. Maybe? I don't know. OP, you get zero out of five bad guys. What you did was completely normal, and she gets, I guess, two out of five bad guys? I'm also giving her two out of five on the weirdo scale, because I just can't figure this lady out. 
I'm also giving your sister 1.5 out of 5 bad guys, because even though I do understand why she's upset that you chased off her friend, the thing is, this is your house too, so she's kind of responsible for her guests, so she can't bring a guest in who disrespects you and then criticize you for kicking her out. Well, you didn't even kick her out, you just told her what's what, and she left on her own. So your sister being upset at you is a bit unfair to you. Am I the bad guy for refusing to pay for my gender reveal cupcakes? I'm a 22 year old woman and I found out last week my first baby's gender and it's a little girl. My family's excited about it so I decided to do a small gender reveal over the Easter weekend. A few days before, I asked a small local business if she could please make 12 cupcakes with pink and blue icing on top and pink icing in the middle. She agreed and said they'd be ready to collect Friday evening. The plan was to pick the cupcakes up on Friday, invite friends and family over on Saturday, and give the guests a cupcake which would reveal the gender. I only invited a few guests because my apartment is fairly small and I didn't want to do a large gender reveal anyway, just something cute and fun, plus everyone loves cupcakes. So Friday evening came and the small business owner, Claire, gave me her address to collect the cupcakes from. She said they'd cost 25 pounds and they were ready to collect whenever. I drove to her apartment and knocked on the door. She greeted me there with the box of cupcakes and they looked amazing. They were exactly how I imagined them and thanked her for them. She gave me the box, but just as she did, her large pet dog came running up to me, barking and jumped at me, knocking the box of cupcakes all over the floor. Claire apologized and shut the dog inside as he was still barking and jumping at the door. She said that it's because he gets excited when people come and visit, but he wouldn't have hurt me because he's friendly. At this point, I didn't know the damage to the cupcakes because the box landed upside down. I picked it up and the cupcakes were ruined. The icing had smashed all over the box and some cakes had spilled out onto the ground. Claire looked horrified as she had spent a few hours making them for me. She apologized and said that she could remake them for free, but they wouldn't be ready until Sunday. I said, unfortunately, I'm expecting my guest tomorrow and Sunday is no good as I already had other plans. I explained that I wouldn't be paying for these cupcakes as they were inedible and ruined by her dog. We agreed on payment upon receiving the goods and since I never received them, I wouldn't be paying. She said that I should still pay because she had to buy ingredients for the cakes and the cost of eggs had gone up, meaning she would be out of pocket. I said that if she had control over her dog, then they wouldn't have been dropped and I'm sorry, but again, I'm not going to be paying. I got in my car and left without the cupcakes. I still had my guests attend on Saturday and I announced the gender in person, rather than with some cupcakes, but it was still nice spending some time with friends and family. My family was happy, but my sister-in-law said that I should have still paid for the cupcakes because she accepted that it was her fault and offered to remake them for me. Personally, I don't think that I should have had to pay for them, but now I'm feeling slightly guilty as I understand that it's a small business and a loss of profit would affect her a lot harder than a larger business. Am I the bad guy? Hold on, hold on. You're supposed to pay for cupcakes that you never received? You're supposed to pay for destroyed cupcakes that you didn't eat or show off or take pictures of and post on Instagram or whatever you want to do with your cupcakes. So like, you know how you go to Amazon and you order, I don't know, a pair of socks on Amazon and then Amazon sends you an email and they're like, hey, so uh, we don't have the socks anymore, but we're going to keep your money because you still ordered them. So it's not fair for us to have to eat the cost of trying to get you the socks. That's just not fair to us, Amazon, the company. This is just really stupid. I'm not saying you're stupid, OP. I'm just saying this situation is stupid. Her dog destroyed your cupcakes and she expects you to pay for them, huh? Oh, well, you're going to be out of pocket? Okay, well, control your dog then. The simple reality is that when you're starting a business, you're bound to make mistakes. And in the grand scheme of things, this is like a relatively low-cost mistake for this woman. Yeah, it sucks that she wasted money on flour and eggs and sugar or whatever, but it's kind of a good thing that she learned this lesson on a low-stakes batch of just $25 cupcakes. So, OP, you get 0 out of 5 bad guys. I'm giving Claire 1 out of 5 bad guys. Yeah, what she did was unprofessional, but it wasn't malicious, and she's a small business, so I guess this is a lesson she had to learn at some point, so I can't be too hard on her. That was r slash am I the A, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.